Welcome to the madhouse. <laughs> Welcome back to another video. Today we will be reviewing. Why do you go like in a different voice every time we record? All right, you want me to start over? No, I'm just saying. It's just like you go in a whole different character. I just get excited. You go in like a whole different character when we start. Recording. Are you gonna edit this out? No. Well then, I'm not gonna talk. <laughs> What's going on, ladies and gentlemen? We're here to talk about today um, a couple. Well, this is one of three videos we're filming right now. Um, three. We're gonna talk about not scary farm Wait. oh yes yes we will be talking not scary farm no. yes not scary farm is in the, review in review can you put that there in, in review. review not scary farm 2019 review um yeah we had a blast at knots this year knots was probably hands down our favorite event that's why it was hard to make this list yeah i agree it was definitely difficult with ranking all the mazes yeah. and just everything everything uh, we're gonna start with the mazes we'll go to scare zones uh, and then we'll give our overall review of the event. So, starting with number nine. Number nine. Uh, I'm going to put for mazes. This is mazes now. Uh, number nine for me is Shadowlands. Shadowlands. Live by the sword, die by the sword. Tell us why number nine. Um, I mean, it was a good maze, and the characters did a really good job for it being its farewell maze. Uh, what are you doing? Oh, I'm waiting for the butt. The characters were good. However, yeah, you know, uh, but, uh, however, um, I've already seen this maze, and it was nothing really new to it, uh, and yeah. No diss to all the characters, though. They did a phenomenal job for its final year, but I think it was just for me. It was something I've already seen, so I didn't. So I put it at nine. Makes sense. My number nine is a maze that did die by the sword this year. Shadowlands? But it did live. For six years. Shadowlands. Shadowlands. Uh, like Anthony said, I think this character did a tremendous job. They got to, definitely got some great scares. Especially in that first room when you're going through the forest. Those it's guys in like camo, those. or gals in camo, whatever they were, were really great at hiding. And I love that. But I, but I, 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 I agree with Tony. You know, there was times, especially towards the end of the run, we were walking through it. And you can see that there was a little bit of stuff that was still, like especially like uh, all the practical effects were kind of down, and things like that. But the, the characters did a tremendous job because I know that well, I remember one time uh, specifically, we were waiting in line and the queue line was going towards like where the exit was, and I could not count how many people were coming out like yelling, like oh my god, oh my god, like like especially those like that last room where like the samurais were. Uh, you know, they did a really good job there. Test your mind. And all the bungee scares were really cool. Yeah. So, I, I had a good time. Uh, number eight for me is... Let me see here. What did I put? I put Paranormal Inc. Now, I had a tremendous time going through this. But I think we had mentioned this on our hype list. I wish it would change episodes. I enjoyed that they go into that... Uh, the sanitarium or whatever it's called, but I feel like it's it, like it has so much more room for opportunity that I want it. I want to see it grow more, yeah, and do more things. Not saying it's a bad maze, because I think all nine mazes that they had in Nos this year were tremendous. Um, they had great scares, great sets, etc. But. I just, I just think there's so much more room for growth in Paranormal, so I'm going to put it lower in the hopes that maybe one day it'll grow to another level. My, like number, eight, out. my number eight is Pumpkin Eater. Pumpkin Eater. I put Pumpkin Eater at number eight because, again, it's something that I've seen, something that I've been through. Um, like, the only part in that whole maze that scares me is when you see, like, the giant kind of, like, bug thing yeah. in the center of the pumpkin, which I'm assuming is just, like... It's, it's, I don't know what it is. but Probably like some insect or something I got in there. I don't like bugs, so like that terrifies me every time I go through it. I try to rush my way through that part. But uh, yeah, that's about the only thing that terrifies me with that maze. But 
Um, I don't know. I want to see something more connected to the Hollow. Yeah. Which I'm not saying that probably it probably connects to the Hollow in its own way, but it does. I I, I think one of one of the actors we had on there said that that's the village next to the Hollow. Yeah. Um, so that's its connection to the Hollow. Yeah. So I think I I want to I just want to see something that's like more tied into the lore of the Hollow, like maybe a of kind of like a kind of like an origins type maze for the Hollow. You know. That'd be mean? sick. Like with the witches. Yeah. You got to see everything, and then when you get out of the maze, like it continues the story more, just like how yeah. Origins did. If they did kind of something like that for all the scare zones, that'd be super sick. Like for Carnival or something, you know, like the replace for Shadowlands is that maybe put like a circus back there or something or. Well, I don't know. I don't know that they will do that because of Dark Ride. Connecting sort of the well, Dark Ride. Yeah, I mean, the Dark Ride is a, a, essentially just a Dark Ride. Yeah, but it, but the clowns are there. It's a Carnival ride. That's about it. Yeah. But I mean, they can obviously they could do a circus type maze. That's a completely different thing. They do have that option. Um, but yeah, that's why I put Pumpkin at number eight. Uh, number seven for me is gonna go to Paranormal Inc. Seven. Paranormal Inc. Uh, because I don't know. I, mean, I like Paranormal Inc. But much like what Sammy said, I wish they would just incorporate like a new episode every time. Um, and me and Sammy have been talking a lot about like what would be really cool and scary with that maze was if they like included like a lights out type of deal to it. Um, because it worked so well with Trick or Treat that I feel with Paranormal it would be freaking terrifying. Oh, it would be completely terrifying. Especially because you're walking through an asylum and then they have the option to turn it off and on. They want they they pretty much control what you see. It would be a terrifying experience, and we're it'd be really cool if they can incorporate that. But yeah, especially like the way that, the way I would imagine it happening is that right when you walk in, like they don't have that showroom. Mm -hmm. You just have the showroom like run down. Yeah, yeah. And you gotta choose your path on the sides. It'd be so cool. Yeah, I mean, I think they should still have the girl come out and run across, which would be pretty cool. Kind of like uh, that still happens in its own way. Like you shine your light up to there, and then you know you see the girl pop out, and that would be pretty cool. Yeah. But yeah, I like that idea. But you know, that's my only problem with Paranormal is like, if they would have incorporated like a new kind of episode, either. Every year or every other year. I know, like, it probably would have saved them a little bit more money if they would have probably done it like, every other year. Yeah. Just because I know uh, money's a big thing with them, and I, I understand that. They're just... That's why they always could put on such a great event, though, is because they bring in, like, two new mazes, and they'll change a couple things, and... Yeah. You know, and... So, like, that's what saves them a ton of money in the end of the day. And they can also, you know, put it all on, like, the shows and stuff, but... Yeah, Paranormal, um, number eight. Or number seven. Yeah, seven. But Fantastic characters always got me. Definitely. I would say number seven for me would be Dark Entities. Such a great, beautiful maze. And I think they had a, a really good uh, team of actors in it. I think my only problem was that, like, I think the first three quarters were super good. And that back half, there there just wasn't a lot of people. Yeah, um, there's a lot of uh, a lot of like animatronics and yeah, like props and stuff. Yeah, so like you get like a ton of scares in the beginning. Like obviously that first room, you're not really gonna scare, but like it really just introduces you to to the scene. Story and everything. Yeah, um, and then once you're actually on the ship, you're in space. Yeah, in space, like it's boom, 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 Goes and up. then it kind of lightens up. Yeah. Um, number six. Oh, that's right. I have to go six now. I forget. Uh, number six for me, um, is going to be Peter Peter Pumpkin Eater. Pumpkin Eater, huh? Yeah, number six. I, I think Dark Entities and Pumpkin Eater are, like, probably two of the most underrated mazes at the event in general. I just don't, I, I don't think Pumpkin Eater can top the, the, the top five, because the top five are, like... The, the 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 other ones are like B plus A minus. I think the top five are A A plus in terms of my maze ratings, and I I loved Pumpkin Eater. I think what made my experience with Pumpkin Eater so much better is most of the time when me and Tony would be going in those mazes, we'd be in like a really small group. We're practically the only. Oh, ones. We're practically the only ones. Yeah. And so we were getting a lot of the scares. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and we felt like we were venturing into this place, like into the unknown. And that ending is when you're going into the oven, I got lost. 
terrible. And I watched another group get lost in the cornfield once, and that was really funny. So, I mean, that, that was just, I had good experiences in there because of it. Like, Dark Enemy is the same thing, but like a lot of just very one on ones. Mm. So, that made it really cool for me. Number six for me is going to go to Dark Ride. Dark, oh, wow. Um, I love Dark Ride, it's a freaking great maze. Um, and I like the two new scenes that they added, which was the security room and the gift shop. It was really cool. Um, there's not really anything bad to say about it. I just think this, the, the next five mazes were like probably the best, in my opinion. I'm not saying every other maze that I've listed so far haven't been the best. Like, like I just said in the beginning of this video, this was a very hard um, event to rank. Just because yeah, we, we liked everything in our own little ways. Yeah. Um, and if we ranked anything bottom you know, anything from worse or something like that. It's not because we hated it completely. It's just uh, we have our reasons behind it, but it was just hard to rank. And Dark Ride putting it at this spot, it's just for the sole purpose of, like, the, the next five mazes, like, I, or the next, uh, yeah, yeah five, five mazes. I just, I don't know. I just love them. Yeah. Uh, Dark Ride does have some of my love, though. I mean, it's, just, it's such an amazing maze from the story. You see the security guard on the freaking floor dead. And then as you're going through the ride, I mean, you have that homeless person that's camping out in there as she lives there. Yeah. Then you're going through the ride, and it's like it's half working, half not working. Yeah. You go behind the scenes and everything, and then you see like the sinister point of stuff. I mean, it's a great maze. And honestly, I have nothing bad to say about it. I just yeah. put it right there for ranking. Uh, yeah, five now. Number five for me is going to go to the depth. Well, wow. My only problem with the depths this year was they included, I mean, it was a really cool scene, but I, it was just more for traffic purposes, was the elevator scene. Yeah. Um, and that's just so for the sole purpose that it felt like it took a lot longer to wait in line for. Like, yeah. on the line would say it'd be like a 15 minute wait, like, it felt like we were waiting like 30 or 45 minutes. And that, that was just my only big issue about that, and I, I think they added that, like, midway, or like, after the first weekend, because I remember we went through that the first weekend. And it wasn't there. Well, I think they, so in my opinion, because I, I think I went through it another time without you, mm -hmm. was, like, it was either they were going to do it one night or they weren't going to do it, depending on how the lines were. Yeah. Because I had went through it another night and they didn't do it, we just went straight through and I was kind of like, oh, we didn't get to the shaft scene. Mm -hmm. Just, I mean, I don't that's know, I it or I, uh, I, I didn't, I, that was like the only thing I didn't like about this ma that maze this year, just, I mean, it was a really cool scene. I like the whole idea of like you going under the. I mean, it really tied in the story more of you just going under the water, yeah. and then it stops midway, and then you got to like walk the rest and everything, which was really cool. Yeah. It just I, I think at times like it just held up the line too much, and that was like my only really bad part about it. But yeah, I mean it's such a great maze. I mean visually and everything, and I love like the whole uh, Davy Jones and the big yeah. octopus and everything, and then you go into the ship and it's actually moving and stuff like yeah. Knots does a really good job on that, which I really enjoyed. All right, my number five, and please don't hate me in the comment section. It's gonna be Waxworks. Wow. Yeah. That was a fucking good name this year. I know. I'm not saying it was. A hate them in the comments. Uh, is it was really good. But from the moment you get in the queue line to the moment you got out. Court's, but, court's watching right now. I don't, Corey. I'll tell you, you did a great job, and I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not going to hate on this. The only, what I really didn't like was Jackie's the ending. watching right now. I don't like the ending. I hated the ending. What was wrong with the ending? I, I, I think they could have made it more like you were actually becoming a wax figure at the end. I, if you like really don't think about it, it's kind of just like why am I walking through like all this blackness? Because you're becoming a wax figure. Well, yes, but if you're if you're not of sound of mind, and you're really not thinking too hard, you're kind of just like, why the hell am I walking through all this blackness? Because um, like once you leave, like with that like, well they have like the wax and stuff like that, and you go make that turn, and you make that left going down like that hallway towards the exit, it's just kind of like a lot of blackness to me. It's good for scares. There, yeah, there was a couple good scares there, but I wasn't a big fan, and I the water effect. It was cool and the air effects are cool, but I thought they could have made it a little bit more like you're actually becoming the wax figure at the end. And my number four will be going to the depths. I actually like the shaft scene because of the crowd, the crowd control element to it. You like the shaft, don't you? I, That's what she said. <laughs> I don't like the shaft. I like the shaft scene. 
Um, uh, I like that scene actually be because of the crowd control element. I hate when I go through a maze and I feel like I'm just walking in a conga line with a bunch of. That's people. how it felt with that maze though. Like at that scene, like you were just standing in that scene for like literally like five minutes, just standing in one. You, spot. It, it was. You felt like it was five minutes. It was really only twenty seconds, thirty seconds, and it really did good good spacing, in my opinion. It was longer than 20, 30 seconds. It wasn't that long of a scene. I mean, depending on how quickly... If you were, like, the first... Not inside minutes, the shaft, like, waiting before you went... Waiting before you actually went inside, like, you had to wait some time. Well, yes. Yeah, the line was... But I think on super busy nights, they didn't include that scene. Yeah, because they knew it would take too long. Yeah, but I, on the the shorter nights, it was really cool. I thought it was cool because you, you got to experience the going down, and you went out, and, like... I felt like, especially if like you were one of the last groups in, you were one of the first groups to start the maze. Yeah. So it was really cool to be able to not just see those scares happen in front of you all the time. My turn? Yeah. Number four, uh, Dark Entities. Dark Entities. Dark Entities is a very underrated maze, and I loved it so much. It was actually one maze. You can ask Sammy this, too. It was the one maze every time we went through that scared the shit out of me. Yeah. And that's just due to the fact the way the aliens looked on the wall and stuff. They like Again, they look like bugs, and I don't like <coughs> bugs. Yeah. Um, but the way the aliens looked was really cool. I mean, me being a freaking big sci-fi fan, it was like, I loved walking through, and then in my head it was mostly just either alien or the thing. Yeah. Which I can't, I mean, I've brought up time and time again. It's just, I think when they were designing this maze, those were the two biggest inspirations. They I definitely got agree. When they, because I mean, you look at the there, there's that one scene where like on the operation table. Yeah. And it look it remind me so much of the thing. Kind of, it, I kind of also think. Because I know, based upon my knowledge of the creators, mm -hmm. is I know that there are a lot of video game fans, and it had a lot of dead space in it. Yeah, there was a lot of dead space in it, too, yeah. probably. Because um, you saw, like, a lot of dead space. They probably mashed those three things together, too. So, yeah. I mean, um, but I mean, it's just a fantastic maze. I mean, I love walking through it, and the whole, like, when you're walking through to go into space, like, it vibrating and stuff on the ship, yeah. which is really cool. And then that's when it transitions, ultimately, to them... Um, you know, there's a big crisis on the ship of the alien breaking out and everything, yeah. and then you're starting to see how it affects the crew and everything. I think it's awesome. And then at the end, of course, you get like you see the alien content. You know, it's contained in like one little laser section. Yeah. But then, like, you as you're walking out, like the alien comes after you, and yeah, it's like it, it escaped. Ultimately, the alien wins, which is that's how it is, and then the maze ends, which is a great maze. Um. What I would love to see with that maze in the future, since Special Ops is gone now, is for them to introduce that Special Ops technology of the guns in there. Yeah, that would be super sick. Because that'd be so fun. Imagine, like, shooting aliens. Like, yeah. That would ease my scare a lot less. And just the fact that, like, you know, it'd be kind of like that alien Ripley moment where you're coming through and just killing aliens. Like, I would love that. It would give me Dead Space vibes all the way. Dead Space too. yeah. I mean, yeah. Imagine you just had a fucking locator the entire time you're going. And then That'd be sick. Yeah, they, they put that on the gun, like a locator, and it's like every time it's about to, it makes like a noise, and then you shoot the aliens. Like, That'd be sick. That'd be awesome. I mean, if they would go that far to even do that, but even if just the guns alone, like, because the guns from Special Ops automatically, like, they look like they're futuristic, kind of like something yeah. you'd see in Alien, so, or they look like something you see in Halo, for, for yeah. that matter, you know? So it's like, fucking, it'd be perfect for that maze, I think. Um, so, not nah, creative if you're watching. Just a suggestion one year, before you take away Dark Entities, include the gun technology, and I guarantee you, we would have a fucking blast. Yeah. Regardless, I'll have a blast in that maze yeah. without them, but I mean, I would love it, the gun It would be next level. It would be next level. Yeah, it'd be awesome. Um, my turn, number three, still? Uh, uh, no, I think I'm three. No, I'm three, because I just ended mine four. Oh, okay. Three for me. And I, the, I put this in the top three on purpose because the other two were just, they were so good, but three, it had to be in the top three at least, is Special Ops Infected. Yeah. The um, reason why I put this in number three is because not only was it a great farewell, we had a lot of memories, um, and we had a lot of people on Summer, or not Summer of Get, why do I always call it Summer of Get? Summer of Get. Character Appreciation Month, <laughs> where they were in... Um, Fall Fanatics. In, in, uh, in Infected. <laughs> And they told us some great stories, and then of course we—I mean, we got to see Bree every night, every time we went through it. Yeah. So that was always fun to see where she would be and if we can, you know, interact with her or not. Um, so that was fun, uh, and then of course just the whole—the whole, like I said, the whole thing with the guns, like it just really puts you in an immersive type of environment where you're in the story and you're shooting the zombies, 
and it's just it's really fun. You go, you go into like a whole new person when you do that. I yeah, mean, definitely. Always play responsibly though. Don't be an asshole and fucking yeah. hit the characters. Uh, but yeah, I, I I love that maze a lot, and I really. I really had an amazing time, especially for its farewell. I remember, like, the last night we went into it, it was, like, kind of bittersweet for me and you because it was, like, that was yeah. it for us. Yeah, but, definitely. Um, I, I really enjoyed that maze, and it's going to be missed, but I can't wait to see what replaces it. Yeah, I'm excited to see what happens next. All right, my number three will be Dark Ride. I really love this maze. I love all of the practical effects. I like, like as you're walking through it, you have all these little fun practical effects. That you would see, that you would see like at a Halloween store on your typical dark ride. Um, and I just love this. I really love the audio design. It's audio good. design is so good. It's a killer maze. soundtrack. It is a great soundtrack. Even the little cameos of other music you hear throughout the maze are really cool. Oh, are you talking about Credence? Credence, yeah. Um, Clearwater Revival. Which is super cool. And I think, I love the scares. Like the monkey scare is really cool. Uh, and they're in a box too, which makes it even funnier. Yeah, I love the wizard wizard room with the dragon. Yeah, that's, I've always thought that dragon looked really cool too. Yeah, and I love I love the two new additions of the surveillance room with the buttons and the exit through the gift shop, and then obviously the it's picture. A good documentary. It, it is a really good documentary. <laughs> I love the picture thing, uh, especially when it was confirmed. Um, during our, one of our interviews, that, that that picture happens when you press the button. Yeah. And I think one of my favorite memories is like when we were going through one of the first times, we were super excited to press the button, and there was that scare actor underneath pressing the button. Pressing them too, yeah. And that was really fun. I think what was really exciting for us, because we, we had went to the Midsummer Screen panel, and we were just like, holy shit, this is going to be cool. Like, we were just tripping out on it, so. That was All cool. right, and then my number two is going to be Origins. <laughs> Curse of Calico. Wow. I know what your number one is, though. Yeah. A beautiful maze. A great maze from the moment you get in the line to the moment you enter. And once you enter, you're just really immersed in the story. Uh, and I, I love that. I love being immersed in the story. Um, I love that. <laughs> Keep going. Why are you uh, stopping? Because I had to tell you you were fat. <laughs> Um, <laughs> you would do the same thing to me. Uh, uh, and I just love as you're walking through just the complete love letter that it is to Ghost Town and not Scary Farm in general. Love being able to see the Green Witch fly. I love any time they do like bungees and like flying or any of those effects. And it's really cool. Like I really loved, I really liked that final room. It's like as you're walking out, like you're a monster too. Really loved it, and can't wait to see what they do next year. That's a good one. My number two, Reese's peanut butter. No, um, is a Reese's peanut butter cups. Did not sponsor this video. <laughs> did not sponsor this video. Waxworks. Waxworks. I loved Waxworks. Um, it was a an amazing maze from start to finish, and I loved going through like the rundown museum that he had yeah. which was really cool and then like eventually you went to the backstage i think the only part that really confused me was the b section you know we needed bees to uh i i, I do i do agree though it was kind of awkwardly placed because mm -hmm. like you're going through the attraction well, like, what does it got to do with wax though is that is that what's up what wax is made from bees oh is it yeah okay well, um, but I, I do agree that when you're walking through the museum then you want to like the beekeeper or you get like another part of the museum. Yeah, like it, it was just kind of. It, it felt like it was out of place. Yeah, that was my only. The best. beekeeper did get some really good scares. Yeah, he got some good, good scares. Yeah, but that was. I think that was my only like complaint about it was like that kind of just felt out of place because like you're walking through like this museum and you see these tubes in the next room you walk in it's like a bee room. I was like, what? It's bees and then it's the dolls. The dolls. I'm like, what? This <laughs> looks like it belongs here, but okay. Um, no, but I loved it from start to finish, and then shout out to Court. Uh, we met Court there, and uh, he had some amazing stories. We look forward to hanging with him pretty soon. And, uh, yeah, Court, was he nailed it. And from telling his story from where he was in one place, and then he ended up in the front, which was amazing. Um, that was cool. But I liked it how it kind of reminded me of that movie House of Wax. It definitely does. Which, I, it's a good horror movie right there. And um, 
I felt like this was a good homage to that, and I loved it. I loved the whole story behind it, which is really good. And they mm -hmm. kind of show that in the in the line queue on the yeah. TVs of like the little kind of story they had of it. So I thought that was really cool. And yeah, and I will I will say this. I didn't I didn't comment that I, I didn't mention earlier. I the videos reminded me so much of when you're in the queue line for Indiana Jones. Yeah. <laughs> just side note. Probably got the idea. Yeah. I just wanted to do it just to kind of explain the lore of the whole yeah. works. Yeah. I mean, in order to really see those videos, though, you would have to have gone on, like, on a night where you actually had to wait in line. Yeah. Um, because if you went, like, on a five-minute wait, I guarantee you, you weren't going to catch the video. You, you had to, like, you had to, like, stay, you had to go on, like, the extended line where they go, yeah. like, down by Ghost Rider. Ghost Rider, yeah, you bring you know, it back. Yeah, and then bring it back in order to really watch it. Because I remember that's how I kind of got the whole story of it, and you start yeah. seeing more and more. And, the first time we went through? Yeah. And number one, or just the Curse of Calico. Um, I knew from the beginning uh, when they did it at the announcement event that I was going to love this maze. Um, I loved, uh, the concept art was cool, and then the little video they had of uh, the actual actors portraying the characters was really cool. Um, but I knew from the start I was going to love this maze just because, like Sam said, it was a, it was a giant love letter to Ghost Town and, and the whole lore they've been They've been telling this whole story for 47 years of the of the haunt's history, of the of the witch because the witch is a staple character of the haunt. Yeah. It's been the it's been the icon for years and years and years, uh, and for them to finally introduce it in the 47th year of like its if its origin its backstory was really fucking awesome. Um, from start to finish, that maze is beautiful. I mean, you got to go through all the different iconic um, buildings and areas of uh, Calico, which is really cool. Um, and then you got to see a lot of tributes to different characters in Ghost Town. Like the Bride had a cameo. Um, I know Thrash. Yeah, Thrash's was, character had a cameo, which yeah. was really cool. Um, there was probably a lot more that I mean, a lot of the scare actors who, who were on here were telling us all these cameos and Easter eggs that we never paid attention to because not, John Cook's even in there. This mask, I think, or something. Yeah, yeah. We never paid attention to any of that because this was the first year we actually were, you know. We actually went to haunt multiple nights, you know. So, to call us diehard fans uh, would be a very it'd be a, it'd be big raging. no no. I yeah. mean, because when when you say like an event like this, yeah, we've gone or at least I've gone every year, but I've only gone one night every year. Now this was the first year that we went multiple nights. We went like twenty nights, and we're still trying to figure out characters, and we're still trying to figure out. Uh, like older history of the event. So when when characters tell us stories of like older characters and Easter eggs and stuff, like we didn't catch any of that. We don't know who a lot of who these people are. But yeah. as time goes on and as we as we on our free time, we'll watch content and like old people, all, all the old you know legends that have been come and go of not. We'll, we'll start. We start learning more and we start you know hearing it from other scare actors. So. That's, I think, another reason why I think I love doing Character Appreciation Month, because we've been hearing other stories. Yeah, from, we've been hearing some great From, like, older, stories, like, legends yeah. and stuff like that. So, yeah, I mean, I think with uh, a maze like Origins, it was just a, a big kind of not only thank you to the history of Knox's haunt, but it also expanded the story and and is going to continue to expand the story of uh, just Knox as, as, an, as a whole event. It looks like they... They want to try to do something, from what we're seeing, they want to try to do something and tie everything together by the 50th, and that way when the 50th comes around, you'll have a whole new, hopefully a whole yeah. new slate of mazes. By the way, that's just a theory. Yeah, theory. theory. We don't know, we honestly don't know anything. This is just literally stuff we've picked up as we've gone 20 nights. It was like something like every night we would talk about, like, oh man, I well imagine this leads up to the 50th or something. Yeah. Like, we've seen Easter eggs, of course, and we've heard Easter eggs uh, just from Origins alone that all the scare zones get tied in. And we thought that was cool. And so our theory, like I said, this is just theory. We don't know nothing, I promise you. Um, our theory is that by hopefully by the 50th, they can uh, tie the everything. Entire park. Yeah, and I think that's why they're going to do, uh, and that gives them time even maze-wise to do so, because yeah. they usually change their mazes, like at least two come every year. Two, yeah. So it started with Waxworks and Origins. I don't know how Waxworks would tie into the event, but I mean, there's probably going to be a way they, they will tie it in. Um, Special Ops and Shadowlands left, so I don't know what's coming next year. Yeah. But I'm hoping it's going to be something that ties it further ties into the Sarah Marshall lore. Um, and I don't even know if they're going to do the same thing for the Sarah Marshall lore next year, unless they're going to start maybe do a new chapter of it. You know what I mean? Like. Well, I mean, I, I just got to tie it. I think it just has to tie to Calico. Yeah. Uh, which would be super cool. 
my number one is if you could do the math process of elimination, special ops. It was impeccable. Beautiful maze. A fun time every time, guaranteed. And the the stories we've just heard about that maze. Oh God! Are hilarious. It makes me want to. It made me actually want to work in the net maze. Yeah. Uh, because it, they, 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 it was crazy. Uh, it, it, it was a maze that continued to develop every single year from its time in CS all the way to its last run in the Mystery Lodge. I mean, even not only just develop every single year, but like every night we went. Well, yeah, even that. Even just hearing, if you if you go back to when we interviewed Jackie for the first time earlier this year, she was telling us how every night there was a little bit of a new story being added on. So that from the beginning night of the run all the way through the end of the run, you know, people were turning. Uh, Did you rewatch that? Just no. So you can research it. No, I didn't rewatch it. I just I have a, I have a pretty good memory of some stupid things in my life. Um, <laughs> that's not stupid. That's though. not stupid. But like, I remember <laughs> like stupid comments, like stupid like you could ask me like, oh, like, what did you have for breakfast today? And I'd be like, uh. <laughs> but Jackie saying that the entire time special ops ran, it, it, it progressively got more story added to it. I remember, and it was really it was really fun to be able to go through it my first time this year, and then I was really sad to to end it this time. But I always had a great time, even if I hit my head, even if they made me crawl under things. It was always fun, and you know, you know what what the what but the best question ever asked was that, what happens if I shoot myself? <laughs> Dude, shout out to your cousin for that one. Shout out, give me a little. <laughs> that's like a freaking that's a that's yeah. a Knights of Horror uh, staple memory staples for 2019 but, yeah. season. But, but it was such a fun time uh, we'll now move on to Scare Zone Scare Zone so that was it for mazes yeah. it was it was. we had a fun time with all the mazes this year yeah. and we can't wait to see what they bring to the table next year number four for me there's only three isn't there four Scare Zones? no there's three there was Carnival Ghost Town and Forsaken Lake the, the fucking Fiesta Village one didn't count. That was just a dance party. So it was the Hall of Forsaken Lake? There was a Hall of, that's right. I only have four, <laughs> three there even now. You, you stupid? <laughs> a little bit. I'm a little tired, too. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, 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 math? Yeah, um, math? I'm this many. I'm this, this many. many. <laughs> only, someone, only one person will get that. Yeah, I'm this many. Um, number four for me will be Forsaken Lake. I will say probably... In terms of costuming, probably best costumes. However, I just think we had a most of the time that we were going through there um, it was a little light on the, the 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 monsters. But every time we did see them, they were great, really great. Brought the brought the scares to life. Um, just it's just unfortunately with a small area and a small cast, um, you know, there there was times where you would there was holes. Uh, my number four is also Forsaken Lake, and yeah, pretty much well, you said it all. I mean, I think we every time we walk through, it was either everyone's on break or doing something. And when we found out there was only like twenty people in that scare zone, that was like the smallest scare zone of them all. Um, and it was heavy makeup. It made it made sense, yeah. yeah. But yeah, that was my number four. And it's and like I said, and like Sammy said, it's not nothing to do with the scare actors or anything. Like every time we went through there, their A game was on. They're, they were one hundred and ten percent. But I think every time we went through there, like I said, it was either probably at the end of the recession, yeah, or everybody was on a break. Or yeah, some sort. and it was really cool though because if you caught the procession, like you would get all the actors there. Yeah. So. But if you weren't catching the procession, it was kind of holes. Number three for me is gonna go to Carnival. Whoa. Um, I liked Carnival, and the fucking clowns were hilarious. Yeah. Um. But. I think every time we went through there, for me, I mean, it was always crowded because of people. Yeah. So it kind of ruined the whole, you know, sitting back and relaxing. And, I mean, you could still relax and enjoy yeah. it, but I think just, there was always so many people that, like, when I would try to get footage in there, it would kind of suck because everybody would get in the way. Yeah. And there was, I, I really couldn't find a very good place to kind of set up and get a get good footage of. Much like Ghost Town, where I fucking found, like, every little spot I can yeah. use and idolize to my advantage, but, Yeah. I think for mostly for me for Carnival, the only reason I'm ranking it that much is just because, from a content creator point of view, there was like nowhere I can really go without getting in anybody's way, and I hate getting in the actors' yeah. way, uh, or should I say, monsters' way yeah. of 
uh, of working, you know? It's just, you know. You know. You know. If you know, you know. If you don't know, now you know. Mm-hmm. Number three for me will also be Carnival. Ah. Uh, it was a fun scare zone. I think we have the same list for scare mm-hmm. zones. Yeah, we do. Um, but I, I agree the content creator are really hard to, to, to find a lot of filming locations. Yeah. Um, especially because a lot of... Because it's all of open. Com- it's super open. It's super broad. Mm-hmm. Um, although, like, I, I know towards the end of the run, they, they really kind of shortened up where they were allowed to be in terms of the, the monsters. I mean, lighting-wise, was perfect. The lighting was good. I, I enjoyed the music, too. Mm-hmm. The music they Welcome had. Welcome to the carnival. Yeah, it was really fun, and the lighting was fun. But I also think that there could be more. Uh, I, I crave more from Carnival. Mm-hmm. I crave more characters and... Vastness and every every monster they did a really good job. They had really good scares, and I think I saw some of the best scares there because of people's phobia of clowns. Yeah, but I feel like there's there's, there's you could take that. I mean, fear. we got footage of your fucking sister getting scared of that. Oh well, yeah, but you you could have just had footage of Ronald McDonald walking over, <laughs> <laughs> she would have been crying. <laughs> um, I mean, I feel like they they could capitalize on that scare, but I and I and I know that we've we've had this conversation about how. It's so lit, so they have to use different scare tactics. Yeah. But and, and I would say it's probably the hardest place to scare. But I would also argue it's the easiest place to scare because of people's phobia. Yeah. Um. Number two. Number two. We'll go to the... Uh, the Hollow. The Savages. Now, The Hollow, we went to a lot more towards like yeah. the middle of the season. Because one night I just decided, like, I was by myself, and I just said, yeah, I'm going to go check out the Hollow. I don't go there very much, and a very underrated scare zone. Yes. Um, but we, I went there and sat one night, and I was just watching them slide. Um, they have a good spot where they slide, and I won't say it. I think it's already been said by Riley, but I'm not going to say it just because that's their spot, and I don't want people to go bombard it next season. Yeah. But they have this really good place where they slide, and we would sit there, and we would just watch them work, and all the monsters would come in and out of that area. And um, we uh, we really just would like we would just enjoy ourselves because a lot of the stuff they would say, a lot of the stuff they would do, and a lot of like their characters were just phenomenal. Yeah. yeah, and their shows were really cool. The shows were great too. And then when we found out there was more to it, like each witch had their own little show leading up to the big show at the end. Yeah, I thought that was amazing, and that really added more to the story of not only. The hollow, but it felt like it added more to the whole lore of the Sarah Marshall, yeah. Um, because from what I was hearing, that the witch hunter was actually came from Calico, Calico yeah. and he was out for blood more than the witches at that point, yeah. which I thought was really cool. So, yeah, um, yeah. I love the hollow. We met so many great people there, and uh, those guys are fucking savages. And uh, don't forget where Starbucks is. Don't forget where the Starbucks is, yeah. yeah. And uh, number uno. It's gonna be the, the OG. It's gonna go to Ghost Town. It's gotta be the it's, OG. It's right? gotta be the Ghost Town. Not only now, and there's no disrespect to all the other scare zones. Yeah. We loved all the scare zones. However, we knew by the end of this event, we knew so many people in fucking Ghost Town. Definitely. And I think us knowing all these people really opened us up to not only just the story of Ghost Town, because like a lot of these people outside of Haunt would like talk to us and like share yeah. some of their more story. And when we had a lot of people on the podcast, a lot of them were from Ghost Town and they would share us their stories. We learned so much that like next season we're so excited to go back just yeah. to, just from the knowledge that we know. Now. I just want to watch Barry yell at the people on the hotel. Yeah, that's something I want to catch too. I've seen that happen. I've seen footage of that happen, and he since he talked about it more and more. Freaking hostels talked about it. It's uh, they, there's so many people that we've met and there's so many people that like going into the event that we knew were staples of the event yeah and uh, you know just everybody that we've talked to everybody that we've you know even that people that we didn't talk to and like would just see us every night like yeah there was some there was a couple of the people that were like that and it was just i don't know ghost town was great yeah yeah i mean it, we had we had multiple areas that we would go we had our rounds that we would make every night yeah and at that, at, like towards the end of the day, everyone fucking knew who we were, and it was like it was. I cool. wouldn't say everyone. I would say people, just about everyone knew we, who we were. There was a there was a group of people that knew who we were. Yeah, I mean, but yeah. for the most part, like about majority of those town knew who we were. Uh, I think that's a stretch. I think I think about half, and I would say that we were very noticeable because we're two walls. I'm gonna say but, half. I'm gonna say about a majority. Okay. Um, but I, I would say it was a really fun time. It was a really good scare zone. I think. The characters they have there, the character development, character interactions, 
top notch. I wish I could just be in 15 places at once when I'm in Ghost Town. I wish I could just be 15 places at once when I'm at that fucking event. Well, I mean, I want to be in 50 places at once when I'm at the event. Um, I want 15 places just for Ghost Town. <laughs> One of those 50 places would be Pump It Up all showing. All shows and Pump It Up. That was another... So now, yeah. now, now, we're, done with the, now we're done with the, the scare zones. Let's talk a little bit about the shows. I think our favorite show will have to be Fiesta Village. Um, <laughs> I'm just kidding. Although we did have a great time dancing across it one time. <laughs> oh, we did that multiple times. You did it multiple times. Yeah, I, I did it multiple times. You did it on the last night. Yeah. And the DJ always gave us recognition, so that was cool. Yeah. Um, so we had three shows this year. We had the the Magic Show, the Hanging, and Pup It Up. Now, oh, and you can't forget Fiesta, bro. You have to give Fiesta its credit. No. I give Fiesta its credit. The, the yeah. Day of the Dead Ball, or whatever it was called. No. Um, a very um, stable, your middle school dance, and not scary far. So the now we talk the other three shows. Are you gonna fucking let me talk? Are you gonna cut me off every time? I'm letting you tell go. Okay, so the magic show. The conjuring. Are you done? No. Keep going though. So the magic show at Knotts was pretty uh, hilarious, especially when someone would walk out of the show. Oh, it was the best. He always made a comment like, uh, he goes, all right, we're going to do this, but first we need four people to leave the theater. <laughs> and like you see four people walking out, but they wouldn't, they wouldn't know at the time that they were getting talked about. And that there's some people that look and just laugh. Um, but that guy was hilarious. I mean, essentially, because we, we, went, we went a couple of times to see that show, and essentially yeah. the show was the same thing. Yeah. Uh, same act and everything, but... I think just the different people he got to interact with and everyone there. I mean, it, it was just a funny show. So yeah. I enjoyed it. Um, and then uh, we had... Go ahead. Which one do you want me to take? The Hanging. The Hanging. Uh, Tony's... The Disappointment. Favorite show. Um, the show that Disney should be suing Knott's for. <laughs> just kidding. Um, it was... It We're was, trying to get on Knott's' good side. And you're having fucking Disney come in and wanting to sue them. Well, I mean, it was funny. It was funny. They made a ton of jokes at Disney. Um, and I think my favorite vote joke was uh, the Fullerton College joke was really funny about the, the lady who was paying people to get into college. Oh. But I think it was a great take on pop culture, if you're up to date with pop culture. Uh, it was fun. The, it was connected to the Sarah Marshall hanging. And you had the devil-esque character um, trying to unify the two groups. Yeah. Um, by showing them what's worse, which was really cool. Um, if you want to watch a full version, it's on our channel. It'll be on our channel. Look it up. Look it up. Um, and you'll have a good time. Yes, you will. But you know, we we will we will talk about the elephant in the room. Um, not me, but <laughs> the fact that it may be ending. Yeah. That... Or for the, the tombstone that shows. However, up I have another theory on that. Um, this is just a theory. Just a theory, okay? Everything we talk about, we don't know it, what's coming next year. Honestly, we don't. Um, yeah. But my theory for this is, um, I had looked back at the history of the of the hanging. Yeah. And it actually used to be a stunt show. Definitely. It wasn't until like like the mid two thousands that they had started introducing pop, pop culture. culture. Yeah. And that's just due to the fact that, at the time, you know, everybody knew what they were making fun of and it was just more of a, and it became a parody show yeah. I think now I have two theories actually uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna second, I'll take the second theory you know the second one I know your second theory okay uh, the first theory is I think that they ended the pop culture area uh, era of the hanging and they want to refer back to the stunt show yeah. era of the hanging because I feel with the pop culture era I think they've been getting in trouble a lot yeah um because if you notice, like this, like the last two years they've done it, they included Trump, and yeah. Trump's been a big thing. Um, this year they didn't include him at all, so I'm pretty sure they got in trouble with that. Um, but I think just anything they make fun of, like some people just can't take a joke usually. Uh, I wouldn't say I would say that some people have become um, more sensitive of language and language, actions. Yeah. In other words, they can't take a joke. No, no, no. I w that's that's a that's not the uh, PC thing to say. Uh, we want to remain in good terms with people. Okay. Um, but anyway. Uh, yeah, that's my theory that they're just going to probably hopefully one day bring back the uh, stunt show. Okay. I think my th the theory I'm more likely to subscribe to. If you haven't subscribed to the Knights of Horror, subscribe right away. Shameless plug. Always shameless plugging. Anyway, I can. But um, I think I'm going to go with 
and it's going to be done for 47 and it's going to come back at 50 because I don't think you can do 50 without doing it in the hanging. It's true. Um, I think, or else you're doing Alvira. Or else you're putting Alvira on that stage. You have to, I think you have to have the hanging at 50. And so, I don't know what it's going to be. And it may, it, I don't know what it'll look like, but I'm really hoping it does 50. Um, the 50th will be a hanging. Um, and I'm going to propose a third theory as well in this case. Maybe just the ending of the hangman. I, well, that was going to be my second theory was, like, maybe they just did this, I mean, I don't know, maybe it might actually be coming back next year. They probably just did this just for the lore of the whole Sarah Marshall thing. Yeah. Maybe it will be the same essential person they hang again, another hangman of some sort, but the show will be different. I don't know. Yeah. But um, we'll see. Hopefully it does make a return. If it's going away for a little bit and then it return, it's yeah. got to return at the fifty. Like that's yeah. a staple. At yeah, heart. I would. I would be upset if it didn't return at fifty. Yeah, and I haven't been to the event that oh, long. Yeah, yeah, I've only been to 09 and nineteen. Like I think, like every year I've gone to the haunt. It's one of the things I make sure I have the time to do yeah. is watch the hanging. And I, I would say if they're gonna take it away for a little bit, you know, give it a little hiatus that way people kind of are like calm down about it, and then bring it back for the 50th like it'd be perfect because i think and i think it'll have its charm again if you bring it back at 50. if they bring it back for the 50 what they can do is not only just make fun of stuff but they can make fun of the history they can make yeah they can like include all the 50 years of haunt you know what i mean yeah. like from start to finish so that'd be really cool and the easter eggs galore yeah so it'd be good for diehard fans of the event who've been there all 50 plus years yeah who's been going for 50 plus years or people who are like our age who would go back and look at the history and know a lot of stuff and everything yeah. so that'd be really cool um, well, let's talk about our favorite show. We, well, I was going to tell you what I think is going to come on the stage next year. For Oh, um, okay. Go for it. Go for it. I heard a leak that Jabberwocky signed a deal with Knox. They will be at the hanging stage next season. Wait, what's the, what's the group in Orlando? The um, Academy of Villains. Bro, Academy of Villains versus Jabberwockies. Academy of Villains, dude, hands down. I know, I know, but they're going to have a oh, dance battle dude. right there. Right at Knox, dude. You hit her here first with the Knights of Horror. The leak, the new stage where yeah. the hanging be. Academy villains, Jabwalkies. This is our, it's our first speculation video. I'm just kidding. If the Jabwalkies were to sign with Knots, I would not go to that event anymore. I'm just kidding. I would still go to the event. Yeah, we just would avoid that. Just avoid that area. Just, uh, yeah. What would bring signs and be like, go back to HHN? <laughs> no, I'd just be like, leave California. <laughs> go somewhere else. Vegas wants you. <laughs> Vegas wants you Heard back. Circus Circus is looking for something. Yeah, dude. Like, fuck. <laughs> no. I don't know what's coming to the stage next year. But uh, let's talk about our favorite show. Pop it up, fuck it up, fuck it up, fuck it up. Pop it up was hilarious. It and was so good. I know a lot of people doubted the show from. I, I would say that I was kind of. I was a. I would say that their performance at the the announcement event wasn't what it what it actually ended up being. Because I was a little sketchy off their performance. I was. I was. Not. I had hope for it because of improv. Yeah. Because I, I know that improv obviously changes depending on the scenario. Yeah. But they brought their A game every I, time. I was not, I was not like, I was I was all for it from the announcement to the event until now. Because one, if you guys don't know by now, me and Sammy did improv in high school. So like a show like this, this was like something we were so hyped for because Definitely. it was something that we loved doing. And it was something that we just had an amazing time doing at all. But... Puppet up, dude. I mean, to mix improv with puppets. Great choice. Beautiful. Great choice. And not only that, there's a lot of audience interaction. Yeah. And, you know, the suggestions from the audience. So every time you went, it was a different show. I mean... And if they got someone to go up there and puppet with them? It was a gold. One. Yeah, it was gold. I mean, some people were really good at it. There'd be, we got a couple of shows that where people were like naturals at it. But then the people who weren't... like Were even better. It, it created a, such a funny story, man. Like, yeah. I, I love... Up here. Up here, yeah. <laughs> or like when the, the guy was just looking up the entire time. Like that was probably one of the funniest ones we've ever did. Um, Wendy. Oh, great song. Great song. She has stormy eyes. Yep. I love Wendy. That's a great song. Uh, um, uh, uh, yeah. Uh, naked Puppets are great. Oh, um, that's what we're all waiting for. Yeah, Naked Puppets, man. Always. Um, but uh, Sammy, was, Sammy was like a little kid every time I went to go see Puppet Up. Oh, there, I, I loved it. It was almost like I was at Disneyland. Yep. Almost. Almost. <laughs> Disneyland Uncensored. <laughs> Disneyland Uncensored. <laughs> um, yeah, but I love the whole Uncensored thing, too. I mean, and they make it very strict, like, this is going to be a lot of cussing. Yeah. It might offend people. 
Yeah. Um, Not recommended for anyone under 13. Yeah, so, I mean, it was it was hilarious. And every group we took with us to go see it loved it, too. Oh, yeah. Like, your sister and everybody, the yeah, yeah. mom and everybody that went with us, they loved it. Yeah. When we took Gio and, and you know, his friends, they, they loved, loved it. it. Yeah. Like, everyone we went with to see Pop It Up loved it. Oh, like, yeah. And so, it, Nuts, you're doing a good job with that, and I hope that we, we get to see it again next year. I hope so, too. Um, I think my only thing is, like, if they could, my only suggestion for Pop It Up is... Uh, Maybe switch up games every show. You know, like each show would be different with different games. Well, I would I would say that the the three shows all had different games, but it, every slot had the same games in yeah. terms of like on the night you went. Yeah, yeah. But I just I, I think that was for consistency sake for the the players. Yeah. As opposed to the audience. But I would love to see like more games introduced too. Yeah. I mean, because there's a lot of uh, there's, there's a lot, a lot of, of improv, improv games that they could play, but I don't know how much they could do with actual puppets. And can we just talk how great those James Bond ones were? Oh, dude, the James Bond songs, dude. Great. Yeah, shout out to the whole cast just to that. Yeah. And then, uh, it, you know, what's funny is I've been watching a lot of Disney Plus, obviously. Yeah. Uh, Sulef, Zach, and Cody is on there, and freaking Patrick. Patrick. Yeah. He's he plays the the uh, restaurant um, like manager. Yeah. And. I've been seeing him every time, and every time I see him, I yell, pop it up. Yeah. Like, I just, I, it's cool that, like, I actually pop got, it up. I got to see that guy in person, which is really cool. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, man, I mean, Knott's has been amazing this year. Yeah, man. it was a amazing event from the moment that you got in line to the music that they were playing there, all the way to coming out to your car. It was always a good time. Yeah. I mean, they, they, I can't wait to see what happens next year i mean i, really I don't want think to be there i don't think we'll go nearly as much as we did next year depending on my work schedule yeah it'll be depending on you it would be depending on my work schedule so if i if i can get into days again or just another job in general um which i don't plan on leaving this job anytime soon but yeah days hopefully yeah but days um then we'll work probably work something out but i mean if anything dude probably catch us there saturdays and sundays and then yeah Maybe me if I if I decide you maybe late night fucking Thursday and Fridays we'll see. Yeah. Um, I'll probably only go for like an hour or two on Thursdays and maybe like three hours on Fridays. I'll just be chilling around his house at eleven o'clock. Are we going? <laughs> on Friday nights you can, yeah. Yeah. If you can make it that long. Well, I'll just sleep at your. I'll just sleep at your job. I'll sleep at my job. Just wait for you to sit do with Daniel. <laughs> uh, but yeah, Amigo. but Knotts was great, and it has a lot to do with not only the people that we met, but like Just everyone. They did, they did a great job. Everyone behind the back. scenes, everyone on stage, were great, and um, I think a lot of the the new friends that we met this season too. It just it's gonna make the event so much freaking fun next year. More fun. It's I'm really looking forward to next year, and I can't wait to see what everybody's doing. Like I'm already hearing a lot of like the rumors. A lot of the rumors and a lot of the good stuff that like a lot of the characters are working on. And yeah, I know that they're hard at work developing their characters. Yeah, and I'm always excited to like hear character development. Like when I hear yeah. people like, "Yeah, I'm working on this for yeah. my character," I'm just like, which really just shows their love for the event. Yeah, like the first and foremost, I think every single monster you interact with loves the event. They're not there to get that paycheck. They're there because they they scare because they care. You almost fucked that up. I almost did. Um, but yeah, I didn't know where I was going. That's why this event is just—it's been—it really changes the way we look at haunts now. I mean, just like yeah. there's so much that we go. I mean, we went to every other haunt, and like every time we'd go to another haunt, it'd be if we would just—it wouldn't be the same because we love knots. Yeah, we love knots. So, uh, all right, ladies and gentlemen, that is our full 2019 knots review in an hour-long video. Yeah. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed what we thought of the event overall. Be sure to tune in next week. We're going to be talking about Halloween Horror Nights and what we thought of that event. Yeah. You kind of already know what I thought about it because we did an East vs. West with Eddie, but Sammy will have his opinions, and I'll we'll go back and forth with lists again. And so. it may have changed because I think that was in the middle of the season. Yeah, we went we went back multiple times, so wow. we'll see what happens. Um, and then the week spoiler, after Spoiler, it's going to be Killer Clowns from Outer Space as number one. It's always is. That's number a spoiler. One my you heard it here first. Number one in my heart, man. Number one in my heart. Why got hate? I'm not hating. I'm just I'm just presenting the facts. Uh, next week we'll have um, and the week after that, LA Haunted Hayride, and then the Queen Mary review will also be up that I I filmed on my own because Sammy didn't get a chance to go this year. F so flu. I filmed it on my own and it'll be a solo video. So solo. stay tuned to that. But we will see you guys a next Star week. Star Wars story. I'm trying to end the video here. Uh, Follow us on social media at Knights of Four on Twitter. And at the night so far on Instagram. And if you're feeling a little extra generous, we got a Patreon. Links in the bio. One to twenty dollars. One to twenty dollars. Different tiers. See what we have the offer. But 
always for us a subscribe, like, and a comment are just enough. To, or turn those bell notifications on. Just enough to show your support. Um, but we appreciate all you guys, and we look forward to a good 2020. We've still got a little bit more left to this season, so let's finish it off strong. With that being said, I'm Anthony. I'm Sam. We are the Knights of Four, and we will see you guys next week. Peace. Peace.